Oh, hey, almost didn't see you guys there. Welcome to the fireside chat without a fire. Today I wanna to do a talking head video. Something I've been thinking about a lot and something I, I talk a lot about with people on my consultations. I do e-bike consultations and I answer questions. People always are asking my opinions on stuff. And I get, this one pops up a lot. It's how safe are batteries? The e-bike batteries that we're putting on our e-bikes and we're jumping off of curbs on and we're storing outside in our shed when it's zero degrees out and things like that. Like how safe are these things? And it's a tricky question because you've seen, you guys have, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen other videos of other people making YouTube videos of their, their batteries exploding or you've heard stories of, you know, it's been on the news of people's batteries exploding, catching their buildings on fire, their houses on fire. So the danger is definitely there and it's kind of, so I want to watch my words because everybody just takes what I say and they run with it. And it's like, no, that's not really what I meant, but batteries are by nature dangerous. They kind of are, but they've, they've just, it's, it's a chemical reaction essentially is what you have. And you're coupling, you're taking these, these super powerful batteries and then you're just, you're adding them, you're putting them in parallel and series and you're making them into a bigger monster. You know, sometimes you got 13, 14 of them put together to make them much more powerful than they could. And then you got seven or eight in parallel and it's essentially you do have a bomb. Theoretically, it could be turned into a bomb. What you want to do is make sure that you're getting one that was made well, has a super high quality BMS. The cells are well made, that they're name brand cells. I you know, I always recommend by LG, Panasonic, Samsung, Sony. Sony doesn't really make e-bike batteries, but if you found a Sony battery, that would be just fine too. Next, you want to make sure, I, I didn't hear, go back on the cells. I would rather get a crappy cell, like, like an LG MJ1 cell, I would say is like their basic cell. I'd rather get a basic cell from a major manufacturer than a premium cell from a brand that I've never heard of. And there's a lot of generic cells. I would much rather just stick with the, the, the LG, Samsung, no matter which one. It's like sticking with a, a Ford, Toyota, Honda, getting like their base one versus getting like a Daewoo, like their, their name brand or some weird brand that like it's hard to find parts for or it's just like you don't know about their reliability. It's like, I don't know. Stick with a good one that they have a higher quality one. Then, and then you want to get it from a, 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 a manufacturer who puts those, those good, well-made cells together and welds them, spot welds them together in a good way, in a careful way. They're not any loose contacts. Um, you want to make sure that it's done by a skilled adult worker. Uh, and they're using high quality parts, high quality nickel stripping, uh, high quality BMS boards on and on and on. There's just, there's a whole lot that goes into that battery. The battery is kind of like a heart. It's like an organism where everything else on an e-bike is like the battery, the, the motor, it's just kind of like a, I don't know, I figure it's almost like a, a plate or a, a lamp. It's just, it's something that there are moving parts to it, but, and there are, and motors do fail as well, but I feel like it's just, even if they do fail, it's not catastrophic. It's not, you can replace it easily. If a battery fails, man, be careful because that thing could go up. I think about it all the time, like how many e-bikes, e-bike batteries I have in my house at any given time. I'm like, man, that makes me nervous. Even though I know that I'm buying, that I, the bike, the e-bikes that I, uh, e-bike batteries that I carry, I, in my opinion, are the, one of the best qualities. There's, there's a few suppliers that I would recommend buying from and I buy from, the, from those. That's why another reason why when people are like, ah, I'm gonna buy my battery from Amazon or I'm gonna buy my am buy battery from AliExpress, I'm always like, yikes, okay? Because it's a better price. Sure, there's a reason why it's a better price. I just, I don't recommend it at all. That being said, batteries are not, when you buy a good, well-made battery, they're just, the, the risk goes down low. And I wanna talk about how to care for it so that the odds of burning your house, your car, exploding, hurting yourself goes down. I always tell people, treat a battery like, like a small child, like, a, like an infant. It doesn't like to be too hot, too cold, too hungry, too, too full for too long. 
So what that means is don't obviously don't store it in the heat. If you live in Phoenix, don't leave it outside in the sun in summer. That thing is just going to be baking. That's you're asking for trouble. And likewise, if you live in Minnesota, don't store it in your garage, in your unheated garage in the winter when it gets down to 20 below. That's not good either. You're going to create moisture. That's going to you're going to freeze and then when that that frost, it just you create moisture, water. Don't keep it too hot, too cold. Use your common sense. Treat it like it's an like it's an organism that's alive. Don't keep it too full or too empty. That means don't store it at 100% charge for like three, four months. And when you're not using it for you know three, four months over the winter, don't store it fully charged. What's even worse is don't store it empty. That's the worst thing you could do. You could have a, any battery that you know is normal. You discharge it all the way and then store it that way for like six, seven months, that battery's probably toast, no matter how good it is. Batteries like to be stored between like 30 and 50%. If you're gonna store it for three, five months, like a long time, you know you're not gonna, you're going out to, to the Marines and you're going overseas to fight the good war and you're not gonna be back for three, five months, store that battery at like 30 to 50%. And if you're not sure what that is, Google it. All this information is out there. If you don't know what your voltage is, it's very easy to find what the percentage is of your battery. And I always recommend, like I always try to slow charge my battery. And that's the other thing. Discharging your battery fast, that means like full throttling it and just pulling it. Like that's stressful on a battery. Same thing with charging it super fast. That's stressful on a battery. That's You're pumping it in and you're pulling it right out. It's like revving your engine on your car to redline all the time. It's like you're not going to get that thing to 200,000 miles if you're just running the hell out of it. So what I would, would recommend is slow charge your battery to 80%, 90%, not all the way charged, uh, and then occasionally fully charge it. Again, that's if you really want to be anal about it. There's, it's not super bad to, to slow charge it to 100%, but if you want to just get the absolute most out of your battery, slow charge it to 80%. That, and then don't crazy discharge it. Ride it at like pedal assist two or three and just use it for exercise. If you do that, the chances of you causing a, oh, and the other, another thing too is, uh, I seen a very popular video was somebody who caught their, their, uh, their apartment building on fire and they made like a homemade battery connector. Definitely, uh, I would advise against that. You're kind of asking for trouble if you are going to be connecting two batteries together. I actually do carry a, you know, a, par a battery parallel. But even then, it's like, man, I, I only recommend doing that if you know exactly what you're doing, using it carefully and sparingly. Like, only do it if you're going to be doing a very long ride or a long trip, and don't use it for day-to-day -day stuff. You're just, you're asking for trouble. Just use one battery at a time. Don't try... So try cutting corners and getting the cheapest battery. It literally can save your life. And yeah, that's, and also uh, turning your battery off when you're disconnecting it and connecting it from the cradle. People don't realize when you have it on, it's live and ready to go. So when you connect it, when it makes those connections with your cradle, it could spark and sparks are not good. <laughs> Another thing too is I started carrying from one, one of my manufacturers, it's a, it's a three pin, uh, mini XLR so it's not like that big XLR port but it's a three pin mini it just doesn't spark it's it's really good you can't turn it you know backwards you can't accidentally plug it in black backwards and do all that so yeah and just battery battery care I've seen a lot of videos too and pictures that people send me of their battery cords that they just like loosely wrap around their 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 seat tube and it's like it's loose and i'm like dude you're gonna hit it with your foot you're gonna rip it out you're gonna catch yourself on fire like it's it's just i don't know it's kind of crazy where we're at right now especially with these diy e-bike builds because we're enabling everybody to be able to do it which is good and bad because not everybody is caring about quality they just want rock bottom price and they just want it done quick without taking the time, like the extra minute to bundle up the cables, zip tie them, secure them, making sure that they're not loose. 
and making sure that they're not too tight. Those, if you follow those things, if you, and here's the other thing too, is you, if you have to keep your battery stored outside in extreme cold, take a, buy a moving blanket from like Harbor Freight for five bucks and wrap it up in it. That'll at least keep it somewhat warmer and it's gonna keep it less exposed to moisture and things like that. And if you have to keep it outside in the, in the heat, keep it outside of the direct sunlight. That sunlight will easily add 20, 30, if not more degrees to that internal temperature of that battery. So just hopefully this helps somebody. Don't, let's, let's try to keep accidents like this to a minimum because it's not good for anybody. It's not good for the person that's getting hurt. It's not good for the industry at whole. It's not good for even, you know, us people who are being responsible because it, all it's gonna take is one person to ruin it for everybody else. One lawsuit, one thing for legislature to, to change and to outlaw everything and just to ruin it. Because right now it's still, it's still the wild, wild west, like crazy style. So let's do our best to self-regulate and yeah, keep this thing safe and fun. All right, later guys. Go to johnnynerdout.com if you need book one-on-one -on -one consultations or if you want your uh, components and, and help and all that. And unless you want to help support Amazon <laughs> and uh, you know help someone like me or other niche businesses go out of business. All right, later guys.